Here you have a finite difference approximation for the second derivative, which is fourth order accurate. So pause the video and see if you can derive this equation. Let's go crazy with some Taylor expansions. Let's start with the Taylor expansion of f at the point x minus 2 delta dx. So the leftmost point involved, if you want. And since this is a lot to write, I'm just going to call this f minus 2. Now we can approximate this using a Taylor expansion by saying it's the value of f at the point x. I'm going to write x once here, but I'm going to omit it for the rest of the terms to save some space. And then we have how far away are we from our original point x. Now in this case this is minus 2 delta x, so minus 2 delta x times the derivative, again in that point x, which I'm not going to write. And then we have the deviation squared, so minus 2 delta dx, minus 2 delta x squared, that becomes 4 delta x squared, divided by 2 factorial times second order derivative. And then for the third order derivative, we have the deviation to the power of 3. So this becomes minus 8 delta x cubed, um, then divided by um, a 3 factorial. So that becomes uh, 6. And then a third derivative. And then finally, we have a fourth derivative, which I'm uh, going to write down now. So this is then the deviation to the power of uh, 4. So this becomes 16 delta x to the power of 4 divided by 4 factorial, that's 24, and then the fourth order derivative. And then some other terms which we're going to uh, neglect here. Okay, let's do something similar for the term here for the f at the point 2. So f2 is x plus 2 delta dx. So this is exactly the same thing, but everywhere where there's a minus sign, that now becomes a, uh, a plus sign. So this is uh, what we have for f evaluated at minus 2 delta x and plus 2 delta x away from our point of interest x. Let's take stock. Uh, we're interested in the second order derivative. So this guy here, the first order derivative, that's an uninvited guest. So the idea is to get rid of this. How can we get rid of this? f prime term simply by summing these two terms. So it's a good idea to try and calculate f minus 2 plus f of 2. And if we look at the formula that we need to prove, you also see here that the coefficients in front of these two terms, they have the same sign. So that also reinforces our suspicion that it's a good idea to sum these two terms. So let's go ahead and make that summation. So that becomes 2 times f. And then the term in f prime cancels as expected. And then we have 4 delta x squared f double prime. The third order term cancels. And then for the fourth order derivative, we have uh, 16 divided by 12 delta x to the power of 4. And then the fourth order derivative. The fifth order derivative will cancel. And then the next one will be a term on the order of delta x x uh, to the power 6, just to give an idea about the accuracy of our uh, approximation. Good, so that's a lot of work when we were dealing with f of x plus or minus 2 delta x. So what I suggest you do now is pause the video and do something similar for f of x plus or minus delta x, so moving a little bit closer to our point of interest x. Let's proceed along exactly the same lines here. So let's write down f of x minus delta x, also known as f of minus f minus 1. So Taylor, this becomes f minus and then delta x f prime. And then we have plus, we have delta x squared divided by 2 f double prime. And then we have minus delta x uh, cubed divided by 3 factorial. That's going to be 6. 1, 2, 
3 and then the final term we're going to write down is delta x to the power of 4 divided by 4 factorial so 24 and then 1 2 3 4 and then some more terms doing the same thing for f1 is just exactly the same thing but with plus signs everywhere okay and just as before getting rid of our uninvited guest here the f prime we're going to sum the two equations so f1 plus f minus 1 and again it's a good idea to do this because looking at where we need to go you also see here that in these terms the coefficients of the things that we've been calculating uh, they are the same so it's a good idea to sum them summing them gives us 2f and then the f prime term cancels and then we have delta x squared f double prime the third deriv order derivative cancels and then we have delta x to the power of 4 divided by 12 1 2 3 4 and then the next term cancels and the only one that's left then is a term proportional to delta x to the power of 6. okay we've done a lot of work we've calculated this expression over here We've also calculated that expression over there. Um, now the idea is to sort of combine these two expressions in such a way that we get a much more accurate representation for this guy here, for f uh, prime prime, the second order derivative, so that some higher order terms here cancel. Pause the video and see if you can identify the next step in this uh, derivation here. So let's call this equation here equation one and that equation here equation two now if we want to construct a more accurate representation for the second order derivative we should somehow make sure that the next term here in both of these equations will cancel so that the only higher order terms that we have left are on the order of delta x to the power of uh, six now if you look at the coefficients uh, of those terms involved we can have those cancel if we take the, the first equation and then we subtract 16 times the second equation. If we do that, uh, we'll hopefully be able to construct a much more accurate um, approximation for the second order derivative. So let's do that. So we have f of uh, minus 2 plus f of 2. And then we have minus 16 f. 1 minus 16 f minus 1 so that's for the uh, the left hand side for the right hand side so we have in front um, of our f we have a 2 here and a 2 there so we have 2 times 1 minus 16 so that's minus 5 minus 15 2 times minus 15 uh, is minus uh, 30 so minus 30 f uh, which perhaps i should call f0 just to be uh, consistent with all of the other uh, notations okay so minus uh, 30 for um, f0 let's then have a look at the term involving uh, the second order derivative so this is uh, let's have a look so um we have 4 uh, minus and then uh, 16 so this becomes minus uh, 12 so minus 12 delta x squared uh, the second derivative then the by design the uh, this guy here the third order derivative cancels and then what is left is a term on the order of delta x to the power of 6 and now we're basically done we just rearrange stuff a little bit such that we extract uh, this term here the, the second order derivative so we can write down that f prime prime if we bring this to the left hand side we have 1 over 12 delta x squared and then we need to bring the uh, old left hand side here to the right hand side so the signs will flip and then if you order stuff we have minus 
f of minus 2. Um, then we have plus 16 f of minus 1, plus 16 f minus 1, the minus 30 f0 stays where it is, and then we have 16 f1 minus f2. The only thing we need to uh, pay a little bit attention to is the order of approximation. So this thing here was accurate up to sixth order. Um, but when we extract f double prime here, we divide by a second order. So what we're left with is something which is proportional to delta x to the power of 4. So that's quite an elaborate calculation, but the prize that we have in our hands now is a much more accurate formula for the second order derivative. Unfortunately, it takes a little bit more computational power because we have much more terms uh, that we need to uh, take into account here.